Before we get into today's video, we just wanted to remind you guys that we are planning a group trip to Greece and we'd love if you would come along. All the information is down below in the description area. All right, on to the video. I'm on my way now. Today we're in the big city of Santo Domingo, the capital here in the Dominican Republic, and we're gonna find out, is this city safe? How dangerous is it? We're actually in a new neighborhood we've never been in before. It's called Anaco. It's one of the more upscale neighborhoods here in Santo Domingo, and I think you're gonna be surprised. So when I say Santo Domingo to you, you probably automatically think, is it safe there? It can't be safe, because you really only hear bad things about this city. And if you look up safety, in Santo Domingo, you're gonna see things about shootings and carjackings and muggings and all the bad stuff. But today we're gonna to be walking around exploring the neighborhood that's gonna be super interesting, I believe, and it might change your mind about the city. Of course, like any big city in the world, there are certain safety precautions that you should be taking when you are here. And we will be talking about that throughout the course of the video. One of the big things is traffic in the city is absolutely nuts. Crossing the street is very, very intimidating. No one really stops for you. This country is known as being having some of the craziest driving in the entire world. So just be aware of that. All right, we're gonna make our way across here now. This isn't too bad, all things considering, except there's no lights, huh? no walk lights. Yeah, there's no walk lights. There are at certain crossings, but most of them don't have them. So you have to kind of just go with the main light of traffic and hope that nobody is like turning right and gonna run you over, basically. So for us, we're actually pretty used to traffic like this. If you guys don't know, we actually live in the Dominican Republic, up in the north coast, in Cabarete, specifically close to Sosua. They drive just as crazy up there, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, it's pretty much everywhere in the country. They all just drive very aggressively, might I very. say. Very, very <laughs> aggressively, and there are kind of are no rules. So if you're coming here and driving, that's one thing you have to be really, really prepared for, is you just kind of have to drive like they do, and yep. be prepared to be super aggressive. <laughs> and same thing with being a pedestrian. You just kind of have to go for it at some point, do, and hope do. that nobody hits you. Really, you have to kind of just go with the flow of things, kind of read how they drive, and drive like them and it just becomes normal somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, but when we go back to Canada, it's extra weird to drive <laughs> because it's so tame. One thing we can't quite get over as we walk around this neighborhood here is just how modern it is. All the different buildings, there's restaurants as well. Right next to us, there's even a giant supermarket called Serena, which is one of the big ones around here. It's got everything. It really does have everything. I think there's a lot of malls around here as well. Maybe we'll visit one a little later. There's a lot of like very modern apartment buildings. We'll also be doing that later because mm -hmm. we're staying in one. So we will show you later in the video where we're staying. So you might be wondering who lives in this neighborhood. So it is mostly Dominicans, of course. We're in Santo Domingo, but there are a lot of expats in the DR. That's why we bring that up. But this area, definitely more Dominicans. I'd say upscale Dominicans. For instance, a lot of the restaurants have valet parking. So that's something you don't yeah. see too often. You also see a lot of very fancy cars. Yeah, so many fancy cars. In general, there's just lots of cars. So not many people walk, most people drive. Some of you might be wondering, why are we not staying in the colonial zone? That's obviously the first place that you wanna come as a tourist if you've never been to the city. But we have been here before. We did stay there. We have older videos on that area, so you can go back and watch if you want. The reason we came over to Naco is we heard really good things about it. One being that the restaurants here are like apparently out of this world. They literally have everything here. Some super high-end restaurants, some really beautiful restaurants, and supposedly really amazing food. And being foodies, we just wanted to come and try that out. We are also recently in Santiago and discovered the food scene there and people told us it's even better here. Yeah, there's actually like food truck parks, just like the one we're standing in now, except it's early in the day and it's not open. But I'm telling you, being in a place like this gets us thinking about food and now we're gonna go try to find some food. Well, we've come over to Nacion Sushi for lunch and you guys, this place is just over the top inside. It is absolutely worth coming here just to see the decor. I've never seen a place like this and they even have Asahi beer. So Asahi beer is Japanese. Whenever I have sushi, spoiler alert, I'm ordering sushi, I usually get an Asahi beer. I haven't seen one of these beer in like a year, like since we were in Japan. So we're excited to kind of show you what the food's like here in Santo Domingo. Now, I do apologize. I noticed in the last scene there was a big old smudge or a big old blob on the lens. We fixed that up, so don't worry if you spotted it. It gets better from here. This is seriously one of the coolest interiors I've ever seen at a restaurant anywhere in the world. And that says a lot, because as you can imagine, we've been to a lot of restaurants all around the world, pretty much everywhere. We've been to over 50 countries at this point. So we've eaten a lot of food from a lot of different places. I also went for a drink, nothing Asian, but it's a 
mango sangria. Have you guys ever heard of a mango sangria? I usually feel like it's usually just like white with white wine or red wine. This one's mango. Mm. I love that we're in the DR in Santo Domingo and we're having Ooh. our first mango. Wow, <laughs> is that is so good. It's like mango juice mixed with sangria. It's delicious. We honestly spent a lot of time looking through Google Maps trying to find a place to eat because there are so many options. We had to narrow it down. There's also a lot of Asian restaurants. Surprisingly, not sure why. Maybe just because it's a trendy thing or there are a lot of Asians here in Santo Domingo. Not really sure. Maybe someone can let us know, but it took us a while. A lot of places don't open till the evening, so at least that narrowed it down because we're having lunch at the moment. Like the food truck parks, I think all open between like five to 6.30, something like that. And a lot of the restaurants don't open until five or so, but still, we made, picked like this amazing place. Hopefully the food is as good. And before anyone says you should be eating Dominican food, we've done that many times, Yeah, right? we love Dominican food, but the thing we love about being in a city like Santo Domingo is that there are unlimited options. It's honestly one of my favorite things about being here. I could probably move here because I love food and I love to try different things and I just love that there's so many options. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so excited right now. Look at this sushi. I don't even know the last time I had sushi and I think sushi might be my top food. Like it's in the top three for sure, but I know every time I have sushi, I tell Anna right away, it's my absolute favorite. Who knew coming right here to Santo Domingo, I was gonna find sushi that looks like this. All right, let's try this out. I do like a bit of soy sauce with my sushi. I also got uh, some spicy sauce, so we're gonna go both ways. Now, in this sushi, it's actually half tuna and half salmon. There's some avocado on there, there's crunchy carrots, and it just sounds amazing, doesn't it? So this is my first time having salmon and tuna kind of wrapped into one maki roll. Somehow it just works. You can actually taste the two flavors. The fish is super fresh. I love the little bits of crunch from the carrots and when you throw in the avocado. It's creamy, you got a contrast of flavors. It just works. You guys, if you come into Santo Domingo, come to this neighborhood and try this sushi because this is exceptional. This is just lunch. It's a big lunch today for me, but when you pair it with the Asahi beer that I have right over here, I'll pour it in a nice glass, it just works. It's always a little bit of torture being the second one to eat in these videos because I just have to sit here and look and smell my food, but now it's my turn. I did not go for sushi. They actually have a huge menu here and they have all sorts of different types of Asian food. So I went for nasi goreng, which happens to be from Bali. And I honestly don't know if I've eaten this since the last time we were in Bali. And that was maybe four years ago. So this is super exciting for me. So nasi goreng is kind of just like a fried rice dish. I'm actually gonna have to go to the notes to read about all the ingredients in this because it's there's a lot of stuff. So basically, obviously rice, fresh vegetables, soy sauce, nam pla, I'm not sure what that is. Sesame oil, sake, coconut milk, there's an omelet, and green onions, and I got mine with chicken. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on, and I also, of course, added some hot sauce. So I have a feeling there's gonna be a load of flavors happening. Smells so good. Oh yeah, that is really, really good. The first thing I actually noticed is the textures. There's like a lot of different textures happening, and I love the combination. I think maybe because there is, um coconut milk in there, it comes across a little bit creamy, but then all these really different vegetables in there are just slightly cooked so you get a really, really nice crunch out of them. So creamy, crunchy, a little chewy, a little salty. I added that spice in there. This is really, really yummy. Well, next up we hopped in an Uber because that's how we've been getting around the city and we came over to a mall here and you guys, this is an ultra modern mall. We just walked in. We don't even know how many stores are here yet and there's multiple levels. Now, I know you guys are gonna ask, how are we getting around in the city? Well, we just said Uber, but especially at night, We've been taking Ubers at night just in case, just to be safe. It's pretty dark outside. It does feel safe to walk around, but we're not gonna risk it. Uber is so cheap, you guys, here. It's costing us under $2 for every trip, and we're driving for about five to 10 minutes like within the neighborhood, so it's a great bang for your buck. Well, I should ask, since we're this far in the video, do you feel safe so far? It's dangerous. I feel pretty good. I know Trevor was just talking about taking Ubers, and it does get pretty quiet at night, especially with, uh, there's not many pedestrians around. So we walked, this, we actually arrived into the city at like 7 p.m. on our first night, and we noticed like it, maybe we shouldn't walk, and we ended up taking an Uber to a restaurant, we talked to the owner there, and he's like, that's a very good idea. Most people around here either drive or take Ubers just to be safe. I mean, I don't think a lot would happen. It's just really, really quiet. Yeah, we just walked into some kind of little gallery though. Look yeah. at this. <laughs> Do you think that's 
carnival? I was wondering if it's it's all in Spanish and our Spanish is coming along, but it's not quite there to be able to read stuff about local art. But <laughs> it looks like something carnival related, possibly. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, different uh, photos here. Look at this. And if you're wondering where we're at, we're at the Agora Mall. I know we've said already that we actually live in Cabarete. And if you're not familiar, it's a smaller town on the north coast. I mean, it's not that small, but it's definitely not a city. It's about an hour, 45 minutes from Porta Plata. And Porta Plata's got a lot of stuff, but as far as I know, no huge malls. So whenever we're in a big city, I'm always like, what do I need? What do I need to stock up on? I know I need socks. It's pretty boring. <laughs> uh, socks is what you go to. I know. <laughs> well, speaking of something that's not boring, look at this, you guys. Like, look at this. Apparently, Santo Domingo is dangerous, but has ultra, ultra, ultra modern yeah, malls. Yeah, if you're coming to Santo Domingo and you feel nervous, just come to the mall and you'll be right at home. There's also a uh, jumbo in this mall. If you guys don't know where the jumbo is, we just passed it there. It's like one of the biggest grocery stores, mega stores. Think of like a small Costco or like a super Walmart. It's even a Krispy Kreme there. It's all the brands. Yeah, I feel like I've asked you this before. Have you actually had a Krispy Kreme donut before? Never have. It's been a, maybe 20 years since I had one and they're so good, but probably not gonna do that today. We already ate. <laughs> no, I don't need another donut after all that sushi. All right, up the escalators we go. <laughs> We're just roaming around to be completely honest. We don't know what's here, but we were more curious. We're already seeing some clothing stores and some brands mm -hmm. that we've definitely heard of before. She needs some socks. She needs socks. <laughs> you need socks, people. Someone may have found some socks. <laughs> this is like literally the most boring thing we've ever talked about <laughs> buying. Sometimes when we go to malls, like we buy some interesting things, but literally really don't need anything except I didn't know the, the funny thing about living on a beach is that we really don't wear sneakers and socks like at all we just live in flip-flops so we went on this trip and I realized that my socks are all in terrible shape they all have holes in them so well, now's least, the time at least they're the time. brand name socks I mean they are um, Under Armour <laughs> maybe they'll last longer than the current socks I can't believe you're on camera buying socks I know. <laughs> it's embarrassing so here in the mall they have a Santo Domingo cafe we actually discovered this in Santiago when we were there and discovered that it's definitely better than Starbucks if you're wondering. So Santo Domingo coffee for those of you that aren't familiar is like the main kind of coffee here in the country and you can just buy it in the stores everywhere. We didn't realize there were cafes until Santiago. Now I'm pretty sure they're all over the country or at least in the main cities. Really really good coffee but let's talk a little bit more about safety. I mean obviously this is a massive city. There are so many different neighborhoods, different parts of the city. There are millions of people in the city. So yes, you could go to neighborhoods that would be considered more dangerous. We're not doing that today. We're this we're showing you, you know, the other side, like that there is a safer way to do Santo Domingo, a really fun way to do Santo Domingo. And yes, we could go over to some dangerous neighborhoods at midnight and probably get into some trouble, but no, not doing that. So yeah, Anna mentioned that we're not about to go into uh, those neighborhoods and show you the uh, absolute terrible side of the city. There's actually YouTube channels out there that do that. We're not that YouTube channel, but the thing is. It's not like that's only in this city. Like we're from Canada and cities in Canada have neighborhoods that are dangerous too. And that's why we were a little bit cheeky with the thumbnail today as well because if we do that we know more of you guys are going to click on it. If we want to call it clickbait we can call it clickbait. But if we're being honest we wanted to kind of challenge the whole danger, dangerous side, the safety side of the city. And I think so far you'll see hopefully we're doing an okay job. This city's ultra modern. We had no idea this neighborhood existed. All we really knew about was the colonial zone. But so far we're absolutely digging it. Speaking of digging it, I really dig this amazing coffee. We're now back at our apartment. We thought we'd show you guys where we're staying. I think you're gonna be a little bit shocked at the price, in a good way, for what you get here. So this is the living room. You can see the big old television here, and the, there's Anna. Yes, of course, if you're watching TV, you wanna have a really nice sofa to chill out on to watch your shows, and this is super comfy. I love sectionals. I know it sounds kind of silly, but like, they're so comfy. I, I, <laughs> next time we buy a place, or we're like living in a place for a long time, I want a sectional. I know, I'll show you guys. So here is where people would eat. And you know by now we always make, uh, I guess, a little office out of this. So yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, it's really a little like peninsula bar type area here in the kitchen, which is great. Uh, they do, don't have as much stuff as I'd prefer. We have to make coffee by boiling water, but they do have one of those like, um, what do you call those things? Those uh, they're Italian those, They're things. the Italian, I forget what they're called. They start with a V. Yeah. <laughs> totally forget what they're called. Yeah, but. so the only thing missing here is a coffee maker, but there is a stove top here, you have your microwave, and of course, full fridge over there. Yeah, full size fridge. Now we'll walk this way and show you guys some more. Uh, you have like a little laundry area, so this is interesting. It's also like a sink, so it's not set up. Usually this would be like a closet and it would be inside. It's not. Don't know why that you can see it, but it is what it is. 
Here's the bathroom. This is just a very small bathroom. Does the trick. Small vanity, a little mirror there. Hey guys, <laughs> is a walk-in shower, so that's that's and a nice. really nice shower at that. And then the bedroom is in here. We have a queen size bed and a big old closet on that side. And we also have a TV in this room, and of course an AC in both the rooms. Yeah, AC, great big bed as well. It's pretty comfortable, so it kind of has everything you need. In case you're wondering, we do have a tiny little patio, but if you want a better view, you can go to the rooftop here. That has a shared pool. There's loungers as well, and some absolutely incredible views of the city here. We almost have 360 views of Santo Domingo, and from up here, you can see just how big this city really is. And if you're wondering about safety, any buildings like this are automatically gonna be very, very secure. They have gates, to get in and they always have like 24 7 security it was 60 dollars or around 60 dollars us that we spent per night to be here which i think is a really really great price for everything that you get in this awesome neighborhood well we left our apartment and we just come over to a brewery to get a craft beer and for those of you guys that followed us for years and years and years you know we often seek out craft beer where we live in Cabarete here in the Dominican Republic, there's no craft beer to be found. That's like the only strike against it for us. We like our craft beer. We get it all the time when we travel. But here in Santo Domingo, we can get what we like. Finally, so this place I think is called La Cacata Brewing. Right now I got a Kolsch. I took a few drinks out of it. I'll try quickly. I don't know if you guys know what a Kolsch is. Mm. The best way I can describe it is it's like a very, very easy drinking beer. Like similar to a Pilsner, uh, maybe lighter than a lager, at least in taste. I, I think a lot of people that like IPAs would not like this, but when we're in hot weather, because it's 30 degrees out today, says my watch, we usually like a beer like this, but we're just really stoked that we're able to get this. Like this goes back to Santo Domingo is starting to have it all. I hope we're showing you another side of it today because yeah, there's craft beer all over this city. Yeah, I agree. This beer is really good and great for hot weather. The thing about um, having craft beer in hot weather, sometimes it's not totally, maybe it's a little too heavy sometimes for like the real, real heat, especially when you get into the IPAs and like even heavier like porters and stouts. Last thing I want is a really heavy beer. And when we're on a beachy area, sometimes I'm just really happy with like a Presidente on the beach. But when we're in a city, it's all about the craft beer. But let's talk a little bit more about safety. Again, when you start looking up or researching how safe is Santo Domingo, you're gonna come across all these statistics. I actually hate crime rates because what does it actually mean? If it's talking about like a murder rate or something, doesn't really apply to you like when you look up the murder rates in New York City and you're going to visit there is that going to deter you if you see a high well, murder rate? Often they give you a weird number right like 88.2. Yeah I yeah, know what does <laughs> that like, mean? It's the metric. <laughs> yeah sometimes it's like so many murders per hundred thousand people but still it's like when you're it, murder rates against tourists usually are pretty low and hopefully if you're going to a city where tourists are getting murdered all the time, you'd know about it. I don't know any of those cities <laughs> off the top of my head though. Funny enough though, recently was reading an article, I can't remember where it was from, but it was all about the Caribbean countries and how safe or unsafe most of them are. And they had a chart that I actually took a screenshot of, maybe we'll put it up on the screen, of the safest to least safest Caribbean islands. Number one, Aruba was the safest. The least safest, 21, Puerto Rico. I was really surprised to see that in there. Dominican Republic's kind of right in the middle. It's number 13 out of 21. So that's what, I, I don't know, I guess that's what I would expect. I think most of the bad crimes here usually are domestic. It's, you know, people involved in drug trades and yeah. all that kind of in, stuff. In the colonial zone, I know there could be some pickpocketing. Pickpocketing is definitely something. But, I mean, if you go to Europe, that happens everywhere. If you go to Paris, <laughs> if you go to Rome, you have to be super, super careful of pickpockets. Here, it's just the same thing. I don't think they think it's as bad as those cities. So you guys also might be wondering about uh, language. So, of course, they speak Spanish here, but you'll be surprised how many people can speak English. Like a lot of the restaurants we went to, there's usually someone that is about as good as English as we are with our Spanish. We're coming along, we can be dangerous with it, but when we sound too convincing, they start to talk back to us really fast and then they lose us a little bit. We also have Translate. Like if you need to use Google Translate, you can do that. But I'd say it's about like half English, like half the places we go to, the other half is of course Spanish or 100% Spanish everywhere you go. But just know that coming in, like Dominicans are some of the nicest people and they're going to do everything they absolutely can to help you and make you feel comfortable. By the way, we did not even say once in this video, welcome back to the Dominican Republic. We should have said that at the start. We just got back from our Caribbean 
island yeah, adventures. Yeah, we did a few a, a few weeks of island hopping, and now we're back for a few more months here in the Dominican yeah. Republic. So if you were sad that we left, be mm-hmm. happy that we are back again. Yeah, I think sometimes people think we're gone for good, like mm-hmm. whenever we leave. Now, we, we are here because we love this place, and we do live in the Dominican Republic. We live in Cabarete, mm-hmm. but this location is so good, we have the opportunity to jump around sometimes and visit some other islands. At the end of the day, we're still travelers, but our home base is right here now, right here in the DR so we just want you guys to know that every time we go don't, just know we're always gonna always we're, gonna be back. <laughs> we're always gonna <laughs> come back but we're gonna wrap up the day here like how did you feel you felt good yeah I felt totally safe all day I do love that like Ubers are so easy to use around here it just makes it a lot easier and you don't need to worry about walking around in neighborhoods that you don't know or at nighttime mm-hmm. so and it's an affordable way to get around because some cities you do need to take a taxi for the same reasons, but it's twenty, thirty dollars to get there. Yeah, here it's. Uh, I think the most we spent on a taxi was two dollars. Maybe three. Maybe three to get around <laughs> in about ten to fifteen minute drive. So it's yeah. pretty wild. We felt safe walking around all day. We walked uh, for a good part of the day towards the the beginning of the video, mm-hmm. and then we took some Ubers mainly just to save time because it takes a long time to do the videos. Yeah. Um, but overall, like, look, I mean, we were just ha- eating some amazing sushi. We're staying in a modern condo with a rooftop mm-hmm. pool. Now we're at a craft brewery for a fraction of the price. Everything costs like what Canada used to be yeah. in like 15, 20 years ago. Maybe even cheaper than that. <laughs> so it's pretty. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty great city, and uh, I hope today you guys are learning a little bit more about uh, Santo Domingo, besides mm-hmm. the, the colonial zone, which everyone comes for, all the yeah. tourists go there. That's a beautiful zone, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. Worth visiting, for sure. It is, it is, but yeah. we do have more coming up. Should we tell them where we're going next? Of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, after this video, we're heading back to Los Tyrannus. You might remember a few months back, we had some really bad weather and yeah. bad luck. We were there last time for just one week, and it was pretty rainy or overcast the entire time. Yeah. This time we're going for, I think, two weeks so fingers crossed that the weather will at least be slightly better i, I hope so <laughs> we're hoping to get lost around us like it should look mm-hmm. like which is very pretty bonita that's yeah. that's the goal uh so it's gonna be a lot of fun expect videos from there and after that we'll be back in cabarete for all of you guys mm-hmm. that are wondering so lots coming up we can't wait to share more mm-hmm. for now we're gonna probably finish up our beer yeah if you're new around here hit subscribe just in case leave us a comment let us know what you think if you're not new thanks for coming back Leave a comment anyway, it just helps us out when you share the video, to be completely honest. It's a free way to support us. We also have Patreon and there's a channel member button if you want to join the channel as well. We haven't talked about that in a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll stop rambling on and yeah. we'll wrap up the video. All right, guys, that's it. <laughs> From Santo Domingo, wishing you guys delightful travels. See you soon.